Hi, my name is Alistair Chapman, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the matrix settings in custom mode in this camera, the Sony's PXW FS7. The color settings and the way the camera responds to color are adjusted in the paint settings under matrix. You have the ability to turn on a preset matrix. So if we turn on the preset matrix, we can now choose from one of five built-in color matrices, each one giving a slightly different color response. The five preset matrices are standard, which gives normal standard color, high saturation, which gives a boost to colors, they are more vivid, FL light. FL light is designed to help you shoot under fluorescent lighting or other light sources that may have a large amount of green in them. Many uh, low-cost LED panels and fluorescent lights contain extra green which can make skin tones and faces in particular look a little bit sickly sometimes. By using the FL light matrix you can remove that green tint and it gives a much more natural looking picture under fluorescent light sources. The cinema matrix gives a slightly desaturated a little bit more film-like look to your pictures and F55709 like is there if you want to match an FS7 to Sony's PMW F55 camera. I actually really like the F55 like matrix. I think it gives a really nice colors. Now, if you find that once you've chosen a particular matrix, you're still not happy with the colors in that matrix, you can change them. The easiest way to do that is to use the multi matrix function. So again, in the paint settings, if we go to multi matrix and we turn it on, we can now start adjusting individual colors within the camera's color response. There are two ways to choose the color that you're going to adjust in the multi matrix. One is to center that color in the middle of the frame and use the auto detect function to detect that color. The other is to set it manually. I actually prefer to use the manual setting and select each color manually and adjust it this way. To use the color detection function, you need to center the color that you want to choose in the middle of the frame. And when your color is centered, you click execute. The camera should then select that color and you should see a hatched line pattern over anything in your scene that is the color you are about to adjust. When you go back to the multi matrix main menu page, you should see the color that you've selected indicated. For example, in this case, R for red. Then you can adjust the hue, which changes the tint of that color, and the saturation, which changes the intensity of the color. Note that although only one color is indicated at a time in the multi matrix menu page, you can adjust all the different multi matrix axes at the same time. So you can make a wide range of adjustments across many colors within your scene at any one time. A word of caution with the multi matrix is to check with a wide range of scenes and colors that the settings that you're using aren't going to give any strange or undesirable results before you go out and start shooting with your new settings. If you've made changes to your paint settings in the camera, then it's a good idea to save these for future reference. And this is very easy to do. You go to the camera's main menu, you go to the file page and you go to the scene file page. Once in the scene file page, you'll see that there are options for recalling and storing to the camera's internal memory, as well as to an SD card. Obviously, if you want to save on an SD card, you must have a formatted SD card in the camera. The first thing that you need to do to save a scene file is to give it a name, and that's done through the file ID function, and give the file something that's easy to remember or relevant to the way the picture looks. Once you've given the file an ID, you can then save it either to the internal memory of the camera or to an SD card. My preference is to save the scene files to an SD card because there are only five internal memories in the camera. So you can only save five different sets of settings. And by saving it to an SD card, if you want to copy that scene file to another camera, perhaps you've rented in a second camera for your shoot, then you simply take your SD card out of your camera, put it in the second camera and recall the scene file 
in the other camera. It's really very simple and very easy.